Hey, y'all. So this is a fun concept I wanted to go over with how different kinds of metaprogramming strategies can be used to speed up serialization. And I'm going to be using JSON with JavaScript as an example for this. Here we have a standard user object. We have an ID, name, email is admin field. And I'm using the generic JSON stringify function to just serialize this to JSON. So we're gonna run this benchmark. And with this benchmark running, you'll see that we get like 5.5 million operations per second. Now, Node.js's uh, JSON serialization and parsing is actually pretty fast. But you know there's actually a way to make it way faster. What I've done here is I've written a custom user to JSON function. You see, we already know all the fields of our user. We've got this ID, name, email is admin. So we can write a custom function that is manually encoding all of those fields exactly where they need to be into a JSON string. So I'm gonna add this function right here to our benchmark. And then what I'm gonna do too is I'm just gonna add a JSON parse right here so that if user to JSON ever encodes an improper you know, invalid JSON string, it'll crash. And let's rerun that benchmark. Oh, JSON string if I got a little bit faster. And that's, you know, that's kind of par for the course with these benchmarks. So you'll see here, JSON stringify, the default implementation, it's getting 5.8 million operations a second, but our custom function is getting 42 million operations a second. So that's way faster. It's like seven to eight times faster. Now you might be wondering, well, why is this the case? Why is it so much faster? I mean, because one, JSON stringify is written in C++, right? Node.js, that's a native function that's been written in C++ with V8, right? They've optimized the heck out of it. But how is it that our JavaScript function is operating so much more quickly? Well, you have to think about all the steps that JSON stringify has to do, right? Because this is a generic implementation. It doesn't know the type of what's being passed to it. So it's gonna ask, you know, are you an object? Are you a Boolean? Are you a string? If it's an object, it's gonna have to loop over all the keys and properties, and then it's gonna have to do the same thing again, right? It's gonna be a recursive function. We're gonna loop over every property for every property. We're gonna have to check the type and then serialize that type properly, and it's just gonna go through that tree until it's finished serializing JSON. But our custom user to JSON function doesn't have to do any of those things because we already know the shape of the data. So because of that, even though this is JavaScript, it's gonna be way faster than C++ in this case. Now, those of you that are kind of paying attention, you'll know our user to JSON implementation, it's not actually handling a lot of cases it needs to handle. For example, if one of our users were to enter the name like this, and if I were to run this, you'll see, oh no, we're getting a crash because now user to JSON is not outputting valid JSON. And if I log this out, you'll see what the problem is. It looks like decent JSON, but then right here, oh no, these double quotes are not being escaped properly. It's like, okay, well, we need to handle that use case. So let's just go in here and I'm gonna do the most naive implementation. We're just gonna use a split. <laughs> and now let's rerun our benchmark. You see, oh cool, we're now properly escaping these double quotes. And look at what happened here. We're still a touch faster than JSON Stringify, but all of our speed advantage is basically gone. Now we're only at 5.4 million operations a second, down from like 42 million. So this is a huge decrease in speed, and notice we barely changed anything, right? We barely changed anything, oh my gosh. And we're only handling one of the special characters that we're supposed to escape. If we look at the specification, you'll see all of these different characters need to be escaped when serialized to JSON. And if we were to handle all of these cases in our custom serialization function, we'll actually be slower than the native implementation. So you might be thinking, well, Josh, then what's the point? Why would I even do this? We should remember this, which is that the vast majority of the time, these characters aren't gonna be present. Majority of the time, you're gonna have ordinary strings, right? For your emails, 
phone numbers, whatever, right? So we can still optimize for the standard use case most of the time. The thing that we need to determine is what is the fastest way to check whether we can serialize the string without having to escape any special characters. Hey, if it's got too many special cases, we know that the built-in generic implementation written in C++ is going to be faster. But if it doesn't have any of those special cases, we can use our custom function. And I kind of dug around for a bit trying to figure out the best way to do this until I came across this library, which is fast JSON stringify. This was written by the guys who created Fastify. And, you know, Fastify, they really care about optimizing performance of their server. And one of the things that they came across is, hey, we can serialize JSON faster. And what they did is they came up with this clever function that checks for just the standard string case if it exists. And if it does, we use our own serializer. And if it doesn't, then uh, we fall back to the default implementation. So I'm just gonna copy a modified version of their implementation here. And I'm gonna copy and paste it in here. And I'm just gonna talk through what this function is doing. Okay, so we have this custom encode string function. Okay, and so every time you get to a string value, instead of manually writing it, you know, manually appending it to the output, you're gonna call this function instead. And the first thing it checks is, okay, is our string that we're checking, is it shorter than 42 characters long? And the reason why is because if it's shorter than 42 characters long, it's actually the fastest just to do a for loop and loop over every character. And so that's what they do. They loop over every character and then they're just checking, are there any special, is this character a special character? Now, if the string is longer than 42 characters long, but it's less than 5,000, turns out the fastest thing is still to do a rejects. <laughs> so what we do here is what this rejects is doing is it's just checking for any of the characters that need to be escaped when serialized to JSON. And if it doesn't contain any of them, okay, so there's no special characters, well, then we know that we can just wrap it in double quotes and call it a day. If neither of these conditions are met, it's faster to use the built-in Node.js JSON stringify function. And that's how this works. So now I'm gonna replace all of these places where we're manually writing in the string and we're gonna call encode string. And now let's rerun our benchmark. And look here, our user to JSON function is now like three times faster than JSON stringify, right? So it's not gonna be you know, the eight times or seven times faster we got at the beginning, but it's still way faster than the built-in Node.js implementation, even though the Node.js implementation is written in C++. If I put double quotes back in here, let's rerun it. And we're still like almost twice as fast, okay? So obviously the performance gain, it's going to depend on one, how many special characters your strings have, how long your strings are, right? If it's a long string, we're not gonna be able to use this optimization. But for the vast majority of use cases, we're gonna be at least around twice as fast, sometimes three times as fast. Now, you might be saying, well, Josh, I'm not gonna go through the trouble of manually writing out right, this serialization function. That's too much work, it's just a pain, and obviously it's error prone because we've gotta test this code. Well, that brings us to the really fun and interesting part of this video, which is that we can actually use metaprogramming techniques to automatically generate these kinds of functions as needed, right? And then it'll always be perfect, it'll always be faster, and you won't have to think about it. I want you to think about something that's very common in the JavaScript ecosystem, which are these schema builders. You have things like Zod, Valleybot, Typebox, where you define a schema and then it creates parsers and validators and stuff like that, okay? Now, when I was creating RERPC, I created a similar schema system. And those of you that don't know what RERPC is, I recommend you watch my other video. But RE has this schema builder, okay? And so I'm going to replace this user type with our custom RE type. Now, anybody who's worked with something like Zod, this looks completely normal, right? 
And now with Ari, you can call a.parse, user, pass in some type, and that'll fail. You can do a.validate, pass in some type, and that's going to be a type guard, whatever, right? This is all standard stuff in the JavaScript ecosystem. But now, because this is actually a concrete schema that exists in code, we can actually generate this user to JSON function at runtime. And this is something that I built into Ari itself and that you could implement maybe in your own projects. So Ari has this just-in-time compiler where you can type a.compile and you just pass in your Ari schema, okay? Now, this is now a pre-compiled validator, okay? And the way that this works, it's kind of like this, where basically, let's say I'm creating a function, my function, and we're just going to say new function. We're going to name the input. And then you just put in the body. I'm going to say console.log input. Okay. So what this function is, it's a function that has an input, uh, a single parameter as its input. And then it has the body that looks like this. Okay. So if I were to call this my function and I said, hello world, let's just run this file. And you'll see we get hello world. If I modify the function to say input plus, let's say some exclamation points, we get hello world with all the exclamation points added, right? And so what this compile function does is it reads the schema and it essentially creates a user to JSON serialization function on the fly and it does it just once and then you can call it like anything else. So in our benchmark, I'm going to replace this um, test here. Let's use the RE serializer instead. User, serialize, user. Okay. And to make sure that it's working properly, we're going to just log it here. And we're going to make sure that we can parse it as well. And I'm just going to fall back to our original example. And you'll see here that once again, we are almost twice as fast as the built-in JSON stringify function. But we didn't have to do anything else, right? So I can delete this. I can delete this. This is all the things that we had to do because, again, we had a schema that exists in code. And all we did was just pre-compile our validator and serializer. The fun thing, too, is that Aria is so fast that like it's fast enough that we can actually both validate and then serialize the input. And it's still faster than the JSON stringify function written in C++. The other thing too is that you don't have to rely on the JIT compiler with Ari. Once you have pre-compiled this thing, you actually have access to the source code string. So if I console.log this, here's the body of that serialization function. So if we wanted to, we could actually use this as part of a compilation step to actually generate, you know, some, to pre-generate this function, right? So what Ari has done is when we called a.compile, this is the content of that function. Look at that. And so if you wanted to, you could also, you know, call in user to JSON and there it is. We it's the same, basically the same exact thing, okay? So this has just been a fun exploration in how we're able to use JavaScript's interpreted nature as a way to facilitate some metaprogramming to get a really cool optimization that basically if you're using a schema builder that supports stuff like this, you basically get it for free. So. This is something I built out when making RERPC, which means that if you're using RERPC in JavaScript, you basically get this optimization for free. And it comes with other optimizations for validation and parsing as well. But that's something you're just going to have to wait for in my next video. Another thing that I put together that's kind of fun is that I um, made a quick chart showing JSON stringification performance across different languages. Go right here is doing 2.5 million operations a second to just serialize. Again, this test is done against the same user object that I showed you where, you know, there's no special characters. 
It's just the most basic implementation with the same exact fields. Go here, 2.5 million operations a second. And that's because Go's JSON Marshall, it uses Reflect, which kind of slows things down a little bit, Which, but it is kind of funny, right? That in this case, Node.js is actually faster. And then we have Node.js V8, JSON Stringify, very well optimized. But um, here's Node.js running Ari, which again, Ari is pre-compiling a low-level JavaScript function that is explicitly writing out the fields exactly where they need to be in a JSON string. And then this last one, we have Rust using Surday, which is, you know, the standard serialization library in Rust land. And the reason why Rust is so much faster is because Rust is able to make use of proc macros. And proc macros are essentially what I am doing with Ari, where I'm pre-compiling a low-level JavaScript function. Okay, proc macros are a compile time metaprogramming tool that essentially creates Rust code at compile time. So Surday does what Ari was doing here, but it has the benefit of running that low level code in a language like Rust instead of JavaScript. And that's why Rust for this specific use case, it's going to be faster. So hopefully you guys found this interesting. I don't know. It was kind of fun for me to talk about it. If you're interested in this project that I've been working on, I encourage you to find Ari RPC on GitHub. Give it a star. I guess a couple people have found it. Um, I'm building an RPC framework. It's code first. As you write code, it generates your clients when you hit save. There's no additional work. And right now we've got a TypeScript server and I am finalizing the Go server, which is fun. So if that interests you, go ahead and find that and give that a star. So I guess that's all for now and peace.